Greetings, dear friends. Here I am again. I'm ready to talk to you about the everlasting gospel. I'm ready to talk to you about Jesus. I'm ready to talk to you about your heaven, heavenly Father. You see, most most believers have <coughs> excuse me, haven't come to the simple fact that when they accepted Jesus as their Savior, they got a new Father. New Father. That doesn't sound right, does it? Maybe they were young couple, husband and wife. They both accepted Jesus. Did you know they had a new father? What happened to their old father? He's still there. He's friend. He's loved one. He's past father. But when they accepted Jesus as their Savior and life, they got a new father. That's a wonderful thing about Paul's message. He introduces us to our real father. Ah, you say that's just religious talk. No, that's real talk. Because when you got saved, you got another life in you, and that, that life has as a father, almighty God. Tell you, did you know that? Did you realize that when you got saved, God became your father, not a figurative thing, not a hope to be thing, not a thing soon, but immediately God was your father? He's the father of everyone that's saved. Now, I don't know what you do about your earthly father. What he needs to do is what the young couple just did, accept Jesus as their Savior and life. And in that life comes a new father. Now, there are a lot of people that say Jesus and God are all the same. No, impossible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. They're not the same. God the Father is the one who had a vision, who had a purpose to fill up his house. Jesus became in that purpose the one who would pay the price that God would have by the death of Jesus Christ a right. He would be justified to make them his own offspring. Some of that's stated in the scriptures. Do you remember reading them? You remember reading about those who were offsprings of God? You remember reading those who tried to trust God but didn't get self out of the way? You remember reading about the Lord's Prayer in John 17 when Jesus and his Father got together and Christ, when he prayed to his Father, prayed that as he and the Father were one, all who accepted Christ as their life would be one to one family. That's going to be a glorious thing God works out because there's going to be a lot of people who go to heaven that will not be able to maintain what they believed was truth. They won't be able to maintain how God was to be their father or Christ was to be their life. I come preaching to you that the scripture makes much of this clear. If you lived in Paul's message long enough, you would enter into the theme without any breakdown in your mind or consciousness that Christ was your life and God was your Father. Because that's what it's all about. What is the Father doing? 
What's his great purpose of moving among people on this earth? Simple. He's trying to prepare some of them to come and live in his house. Now every church at any place would say that's what we're trying to do too. We're trying to get people to go and live in the Father's house. Then why don't we read the scriptures to talk about that? instead of making up our mind. Somebody was telling me about, about a young boy who died and went to heaven and came back and was telling everybody how beautiful heaven was and so forth. That's just something a human could imagine. That's not something we know. We know there are streets of gold. We know a lot of things about the twelve gates, and the twelve apostles that sat at the gate. We know a lot about the Father's house. But we all become one at that time. We all become one at that time. And when we become one, then we'll see that everything the Bible said works. It's in effect. It works, praise God. I don't have to spend the rest of my life worried about some scripture. If I stick with Paul as he follows Christ, I'll be right behind him. I'll be right behind him. People don't like that statement, follow Paul as he followed Christ. But you had to take it because at the cross, God made a radical change. He made a radical change from Jesus who said, Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. That fit in that day. That was Jesus talking to them about the hour that they lived in. That was Jesus talking to them about what they were to do with their lives. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. That was good. Today, our call is not primarily to be fishers of men. Our call is not to preach the gospel to everybody on earth and get them to join our church. That's not what the calling is. The calling today is that we might be one with the Christ that is in us. Christ who is in us, who lives in us. We will be one with him. And that would make us one with the Father. Because we're getting so near the Father's house, that's important. That's important. There's nobody going to get churches together on this earth. I live in what is probably one of the most religious cities in the United States. And I promise you, you can have a church on one end of the block and one on the other end, and those two will never get together. They will never get together. There'll be a breakdown somewhere in what they believe, in how they handle what they believe, and who can believe what they believe. We're not to become one that way. We're to become one with the Christ that is in us. And you know, when you become one with the Christ that is in you, and you preach Christ's message, that is given to us by the Apostle Paul, which came directly from Christ. See, nobody else in the Scripture had that. To my knowledge, there wasn't another soul in the Scripture that had directly from Jesus what the revelation should be, what God would reveal unto His people. Paul received it. Paul wrote it. We read it, and then we're faced with the issue of revelation. Revelation. Paul's words in Ephesians 1 was, When I separated from my mother's womb and called by his grace, he revealed, revelation, he revealed his son in me. That wasn't a going-to-be thing. 
That was something God did to the sinner when he prayed and asked him to come into his heart and life. When that happens, you get the whole bucket from God. The whole bucket of grace is dumped on you. And in that is, you've got God your Father. You've got Christ your life. You've got the Holy Spirit your teacher. You've got eternity to learn. Dear friends, we're getting near the end. We can't go much longer and not be able to carry out God's instructions. So the last line of verse 15 in Romans 5 says, which by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. You get it? Hath abounded unto many. That's the way it is, and that's the way it will continue. Could I tell you about why I talk to you like I do? I talk to you this way because I have but one interest in dealing with you at all. And that's to make sure you have heard this part of God's plan. You've heard about it. That's why I preach mostly from the Apostle Paul, other places in the Bible too, but that's not where God speaks to me. He speaks to me from the Apostle Paul, and that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that way with you. God's not talking to you from Jeremiah or Isaiah. That's where we read and find out what things are. That's where prophecy is. But God doesn't talk to his offsprings by prophecy. He talks to them through his word, Jesus. And so I come bringing you those words. I, come, I want them to get fixed in your mind. This word of God. Somebody says it doesn't matter what you believe. I agree with that. It really doesn't matter what you believe because what you believe isn't going to change you. But what does matter is in whom you believe. In whom you believe. Do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? What does the word believe mean? All these things he said and done. For our benefit as born-again believers, do you believe that? I don't hear it preached like that. I go into the finest churches and listen to them. Somebody comes down to the altar, gets saved. They talk about a meeting they have once a week for new converts. Why? They're not preaching God's Word to them. They're talking to them about what it takes to be a, a member of that church. Which is probably a good thing, not all bad. But from the pulpit, we must preach the revelation of Jesus Christ. We must not bow away from it. We must not make an excuse. We must preach the everlasting gospel that is given to us in the scriptures. Dear friend, if you need Jesus as a Savior, stop what you're doing now and invite him to come into your heart and life. As soon as you can, get hold of a Bible and read what happened to you in that moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Read what happens to you because that will show you the way to walk, the thing to do. Believe it. Believe him. And you'll never regret it. Time is up. Got to go. See you again later. God love you and bless you. In Jesus' name.